Hello, so welcome back. Um, and we're now going to start our next talk. So this is Antisa, um, reviewing three of the routing engines of OpenStreetMap um, and their experience uh, reviewing them and the different uh, use cases. Just to remind you, if you click the link to the title of the talk, and there's a link to the session pad where you can ask questions. But I'll Hello, everyone. Thank you for watching this talk. Uh, first, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Yantisa Akhadi. I'm from OSM Indonesia, and currently I'm also work for Gojek, one of the biggest ride sharing in Indonesia and also in the region. So in this talk, I will focus more about how, if you're using OSM data, what's the result of different routing engine using the same data, using the same starting point, using the same endpoint on different mode of transport, like walking by car or uh, by other modes of transport and also by area type. So how I would like to do the experiment. Uh, first, uh, I'm choosing the routing engine itself that I'm going to test. Uh, the Graphhopper and OSRM, I think it's already like pretty obvious choice because both of these routing engine is available in the main OpenStreetMap website. And I would like to add uh, open route service as well as a comparison and also as alternative to test. I think the quick reason of why I choose these three because they have uh, like all of them have like a really good interface that we can use and see uh, how the routes looks like. For the mode of transport itself, I'm comparing between walking and by car. I cannot uh, add also bicycle in it due to the, it's quite unsafe if I may say uh, in Jakarta in Indonesia, the area where I live, because not necessarily all area have their own like uh, bicycle lane. And I'm also unfamiliar in riding bicycle uh, to navigate in my own area. Usually I took motorcycle or uh, drive a car or, or even walk. And I'm also thinking to add on testing this uh, routing engine into different area type. Not necessarily it's specific to urban only, suburb only, but it can be like mix between suburb, countryside, urban, or even like three of them. So before I start, let me explain a bit of the technical bits here from the graph of OSRM and open service because to understand more about what's the background, like the graph hopper and all Open route service is developed using Java programming language. OSRM is the only thing that's uh, different because it's developed un, uh, using C++. And from the version itself, you can see like three of them is like pretty actively developed. And then they also have like different features that you can explore more. But yeah, I think this is like some of the key highlights of the feature that each of the routing engine have. Uh, some feature may also similar with others or like they have the same feature but not necessarily like the result will be the same as it will be proven by my, the, by my experimentation on these talks. So uh, I'll, I'd like to test, sorry, I'd like to test about uh, how Graphhopper perform, how each of the routing engine perform in the three different types of scenario. This is the first one that is daily commute because I am sure that this is like the type of the traveling that you take the most frequent, especially if you have like a fixed uh, workplace. So this is like the route that you'll take daily. Uh, so what can I say about the result of this? The first one is that uh, the graph of retain the coordinates. So if you type in the coordinate, then it will skip on the coordinates uh, as it is so there is no like a geo code uh, of the coordinate like if giving you the address no but it still give you uh, uh, the core the original coordinates and although this may be customizable like there may be a menu and to change this but in the default setting uh, the only like uh, this is the coordinate that's still being displayed and the second one about the route itself, I was thinking that this is more of the route that, this is actually the route that I take every day. 
this is a really good and short route i mean i can vouch for that but if i may say that this is also the route that requiring local knowledge so if you're new in this area this is not the route that i would suggest because this is really popular route so then it's pretty packed it's pretty packed like uh, there are so many cars and motorcycle passing in the in these routes as you can see here this is like one of the snapshot and this is also like this is less traffic jam than the one that uh, when i'm traveling so probably this different time of the day but as you can see here that the road itself is a bit narrow in terms of that uh only one car uh or only two uh, only one car can pass at one direction it's hard to uh, for you to travel freely uh, in this type of road and especially in the morning when there's also packed with motorcycle as well so you get you get you have like a bit of competition in this route but then and then how about in osrm in osrm interestingly it gives you different routes uh, but this is the route that I would recommend if you knew in an area because it takes major road and it's fairly easy to navigate because again in a major road you'll see lots of traffic sign and uh, it's more coordinated in terms of uh, in terms of the traveling itself so I, I say that this is the route that is good for a visitor and as you can see on the left side corner that uh, the OSRM convert or uh, provide a geocode so it convert your coordinates into an actual address so i think this is really interesting in seeing that different routes but each uh, have their own strength and weaknesses and this is the snapshot of the route uh, prof, uh, produced by osrm so this is the route that yeah it's major road so two car can pass in each lane and then there's there is like a separator in the middle so it again this is like uh, easy to navigate so then how about open route service then interestingly open route service give you different again the third different routes so i say that this is like a combination between osrm and also graph over y because initially uh, it also took the routes that is same with the graph hopper like it's uh, taking like not really a road that is uh, that is a major road and then but nearly the end it took the major road although i'm not really i'm not really familiar in terms of why uh, open route service choose this one but this is interesting because i say that it try to combine best of both uh, result and open route service also provide elevation graph i think this is really interesting as well to give you more understanding uh, or more data about your uh, route here and if we can summarize the com uh, the comparison of three route then we can see that graph hover is the shortest one but i'll say that osrm is the one that give you the easiest to navigate route moving next and then the second scenario is more like entirely urban previously it's like uh, from suburb to urban or and then the second one the second scenario is focusing more on the entirely urban scenario so as you can see the for example if i want to have lunch meeting from my office i'm going to choose like oh there's a really good coffee chip and good coffee that i will take and then so this is the place that i will choose and again the route that is produced by graph hopper it's it's taking the shortest one and this is also the walking route that i'll take but not necessarily i will take this route in the evening or at night why because some of the route uh, particularly in this area is not really well lit and yeah it, it's avoiding the major road but at the same time it gives you the shortest one but during the night, uh, this is not the route again that I will offer. Oh, before I continue, this is also interesting to note that once you move the, sorry, once you move the travel modes from car to walk, 
and then it gives you elevation uh, graph as well similar with the open route surface so apparently graph over is uh, pretty adaptive it depends if you if you drive a car probably you don't really care about the elevation but if you're walking then it can be like your uh, main consideration so as you can see at the scenario two uh, the route that's provided by Graphhopper is taking the road that is not really well lit and like there is no uh, like a pedestrian a good pedestrian access so yeah it's not really safe to travel around especially during evening on or uh, during the night and on this OSRM give you again give you the safe route or give you like the route that prefers like major roads to be taken as you can see that uh, here on the map that uh, OSRM is giving you recommendation to take this uh, major road and then it will lead you to your destination the reason of why this is more preferable and safer because as you can see this is uh, there is a pedestrian uh, on this pedestrian area on the side and then it will also provide you with the tactile paving uh, for people with the visibility impairment so this is really uh, a good route to suggest by OSRM by the open route service uh, it gives you like exactly the same route as uh, graph offer would suggest so it takes the most direct and shortest route available I don't know if this is also have something to do with the that the open route service also having the same or have or using the same code as uh, graph hopper and there is a small difference in distance but basically it's taking the same routes and on the third scenario uh, this is on the short getaway so this is like uh, from the urban suburb and then to the countryside so on this route uh, as you can see that the, the graph hopper again choose the alternative uh, roads meaning that uh, it, it mix between uh, the motorway so this is like some of the motorway here at the beginning but then it takes you directly to the not major well I, I I'm not saying that this is the route that I may take because I prefer to take the highway or taking the motorway uh, here on this route instead but yeah uh, this is definitely true that this is the shortest but not necessarily this is the fastest route because the traffic and the road condition is not really uh, optimal in this area while OSRM interestingly provide you uh, with the same route or a very similar route with the graph hopper with the there is a, like a different in the beginning and then it took uh, also uh, the non-major road but interestingly there is also alternative route here it's it's uh, it's it's kind of being offered uh, by OSRM that alternatively we can also take this route because probably because due to the distance then then you have multiple option as well so this is the second one when I click that uh, when I click the route it highlights you and apparently uh, they both have like the same uh, traveling time but yeah the other is uh, having longer distance and the third uh, the third routing engine open route service it gives you like the same routes as the OSRM which is taking like the major uh, road and taking highway but during nearly the end it took like different routes so it took uh, longer to reach uh, the destination uh, it still gives you like this elevation as well on all types uh, of travel and in summary uh, OSRM is I think it's really interesting because it gives you like two options uh, probably yeah if you prefer a shortest traveling then yeah, you can take this one even like shorter than graph over but it also gives you other intermediate option as well if you want to take major road like a highway for a more pleasant journey 
So in summary, it's not necessarily that uh, one rotting engine will beat others uh, entirely because I believe that each of the routing engine uh, each is having its own strengths and weaknesses. So the conclusion of this experiment is that the, by using open data and then compa uh, combine that with open source engine, open source routing engine in this uh, example, and then also having the say the open license, it gives you open possibility of traveling, of having your own journey. And it leads to, there's a possibility of having routing profile based on the locality. So, because we know by, uh, by using the proprietary uh, routing engine or like a map surface, it gives you like the whole global profile. So it's hard to adjust by yourself how the routing would go in each of the area. But using open data, open source technology, it enables you to have your own routing profile that is specific for that area. For example, uh, if you want to create an application that is uh, directed uh, to travel in the rural area, if you want to uh, explore the beaten path, the unbeaten path, then yeah, you can do that and you can develop that routing profile specific for that purpose. And again, I mentioned purpose because uh, different purpose may may have like different types of routing or different types of profile and routing profile is something that's pretty common in this graph hopper osrm and open route service you can develop your own or customize your own routing profile that would fit with your own purpose meaning that if i just come in an area then probably to uh, and i'm going to have like business trip then probably you want to take the most effective or like the the easiest uh, route available like the one that provide you with less hassle but if you want to you be if you want to be adventurous in area then probably you want to take shortest but at the same time it takes route that most people wouldn't take but you see lots of things that you won't see if you only take the major routes or the major uh, highway for example but you blend in and you're also traveling to place that local people used to take. So I think that really highly depends on the purpose. So I think this is really uh, interesting possibility that we can have out of the combination of open data, which is open street map, and then the open source routing engine and the open data and the license itself enables you to do lots of experimentation without having to worry that uh, you need to pay half the amount of money. So. I'd like to thank you again for watching and you can reach me at the email and there's also the link to the slides that if you want to download and probably you want to have your own types of experiment of the route in your area, feel free to do that. Then yeah, uh, surely we can discuss afterwards. Thank you and have a nice day. Hello, so thank you, Yantisa, uh, for that presentation. Um, I think there were a few issues for people for our stream at the start, but hopefully um, from the talk you understood, Yantisa was um, was covering uh, free routing engines and evaluating them for driving and walking. Um, so I think I'm joined by Yantisa here now. Um, if you want to say hi. Hello, everyone. Uh, yeah, and I also saw at the pad there are several questions. Should I uh, answer that or I um, prioritize the one on the live? Yeah, no, I'll uh, I'll read them out now and uh, you can answer them. Um, so there's a question about the pedestrian ways and sidewalks, which kind of mm -hmm. are paths, I could call them pavements, alongside roads. Um, yeah. So how well mapped? are they um, in your area that you looked at? Mm -hmm. So I guess the short answer, it depends. Like in the metro area, usually it's really well mapped. Like now government really put uh, more emphasis, especially uh, on the business district, like they really improve the sidewalks. Like they also put like tactile paving as well. So it's also help people with uh, 
visibility impairment to also navigate in an area. Like several of the public transport is also trying to accommodate oh, that. Yeah. Like uh, the really sidewalk well. is going to be uh, improved as well for the pedestrian access. But then again, as you move uh, outward of the metro area, then the pedestrian ways and sidewalk is not really that good. I mean, even like there is cases, uh, there are cases as well, like uh, as you go outside, it's not really like a well-developed, uh, the, the, I mean, the, the pedestrian is uh, not really well-built. Uh, there are like different elevate, uh, how do you say it? Like uh, the pedestrian is, yeah, uh, short answer is not really good. So I'm not really recommend, like people would not take that usually as well so yeah cool um so yeah so it will vary i guess the results they get from the routing mm -hmm. um and then uh so open osrm um how mm -hmm. does it prioritize uh road class so different types of road do you know how it ranks them um differently yeah, so it usually goes from the highest road classification and then goes down and down. So, like, I'm taking a sample not from the OSR arm because I'm not really experiment a lot with that, but I do experiment a lot with, like, Grab Hopper. And how it prioritizes, it, it, it takes, like, the highest class and with the highest speed profile is motorway or highway. A toll road, I mean, like, uh, the paid toll road, it's usually, like, the highest priority and then goes down lower, lower, and then lower. So it's from like motorway and then goes to the uh, turn, sorry, trunks, sorry, a motorway, trunks, primary, secondary, tertiary, unclassified, residential service. And yeah, it depends also what uh, your mode of uh, traveling. Like uh, if you're on a car, then not necessarily that tracks or paths will be used in the routing. So uh, it, it, yeah, it is correct that you don't want to put yourself in a dust track because of a shorter distance. Again, this is really interesting. In if I saw like the tracks in the US or in the Europe, for example, maybe different with tracks in Indonesia. So again, we need to develop like a good speed profile or like good uh, road classification that will really reflect the condition in our country. And I think this is like the benefit of using the open source routing engine because you can make that kind of differenti differentiation rather than just depends on that one global class that should be applicable, but in the reality, it does not really happen. So uh, like, for example, it may be like in a country, tracks, um, a motor, uh, like car can pass tracks, but on the in Indonesia, not necessarily that that's like a right choice. Same things with uh, like a street, a living street, for example. Living street, in Indonesia, it can be like quite narrow, so it's not really recommended for uh, cars. So then again, uh, the routing engine itself needs to be adapted with the local condition. So I think that's uh, would be like the answer for that. Uh -huh. Yeah, um, I guess that moves on a bit to someone nicely asking about what we can do. <laughs> um, yeah, or oh, well, so I was going to ask you about the specific attributes that. Are there specific attributes we need to put in that can improve the routing for um, kind of all the routing providers? Yeah, so definitely the first uh, the first thing first is the road classification because sometimes uh, even I still often found like people tag uh, highway equal road, meaning that the highway does not have the road classification. So and that's usually like uh, the routing software will put it like in the lowest category because it's unknown what's the class if it's primary it can be assigned like for example 50 kilometers per hour for oh, no no it should be higher like 60 or 70 kilometers per hour and then for tertiary and then goes uh, down below it will be reduced so the the lower the road classification the speed will be reduced so if we, the specific attribute i would say the first is like the road classification itself and then possibly also put like the maximum speed uh, within that road. I mean, this is also interesting, like some, uh, even like in the OSM tagging itself, it also accommodate that the speed profile can be different based on hour. Like if it's in the morning, uh, when people go to work, the speed profile will be lower. But uh, as the time, uh, I mean, but it will be different during mid-time. The speed profile can be really like uh, really high 
because yeah. not, not much traffic. So yeah, definitely uh, that will be like the attributes. And I think there's also a wiki page that I look, uh, like there is a specific page called text for routing that uh, I can add that into the path later for that, I mean, for additional information on how you can see more about the text that improve routing. Great, yeah, so, um, so mainly getting the class and the speed in there is what's important um, for that. Um, someone's asked uh, your, your company, I think, um, <laughs> go, yeah. uh, I'm not, not sure if, if that's connected to you speaking here or if, if you're speaking as yourself, but do they use, um, does Gojek use OSM for routing, which I think is a, is a motorcycle taxi company? Uh, yeah, it's a, what do you call it? It's a ride hailing company. So yeah, it's it's similar with Grab or Uber in a sense. So yeah, uh, uh, for that question, uh, yes, Gojek is currently evaluating the use of OpenStreetMap. And yeah, uh, we are also thinking of using Grab Hopper for now because Grab Hopper is pretty easy to customize and the development is really great. And also in my slide, it also mentioned that uh, open route service is also developed develop based on Grab Hopper as well. And so, yeah, we're uh, currently evaluating on the use of OpenStreetMap uh, within our platform. So, yeah. Cool. Brilliant. Um, yeah, so that's uh, kind of obviously why you, one of the reasons you looked into this. It's great <laughs> yeah. to, to be able to, yeah, to, to bring in that knowledge and do a proper um, kind of look at that. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, and I think um, that's probably a good amount of questions now. Um, mm -hmm. There's a few others that aren't uh, quite so relevant, but you might want to write in answers or um, or yeah. put in links you talked about. Um, cool. So we'll take another break. The